So, we will first define the statistical specification of a random sequence and with this hopefully we should be able to define what stationarity is of a process. We will we'll learn what stationarity is and what restrict sense stationarity and there is another concept called the wide sense stationarity and we need to know, know the definitions for both of these results and I think with this sort of you should be set for the rest of the uh, course. Statistical specification of a random sequence. A random sequence X of n. is said to be statistically specified by knowing the nth order probability distribution functions for all integer times n greater than or equal to 1 for all integers n greater than or equal to 1 and times which is small n, small n plus 1, so on till small n plus capital N minus 1. So, a random sequence x of n is said to be statistically specified by knowing the nth order probability distribution functions for all integers capital N greater than or equal to 1 and times small n, n plus 1 so on till n plus n minus 1. So, that means f x x n x n plus 1 so on till x n plus capital N minus 1 and times n n plus 1 dot 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 n plus capital N minus 1. This is basically the probability that this variable random variable is less than or equal to x of x n, x of n plus 1 is less than or equal to x small x n plus 1 dot 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 x n plus n minus 1 is less than or equal to x n plus n minus 1. Now, how, you, how do you define the probability right you basic, basically probability that this continuous random variable uh, you know if, if, I, if, if I have to compute the probability basically I integrate from minus infinity to some point a right of the density function right. So, if I say probability for a discrete I can say probability that x can take this particular value I can exactly specify right. For example, as if it is a, a Bernoulli random variable right with zeros and 1s and with probability p and 1 minus p I can say what is the probability that this x is a 0 or x equals 1. But for continuous random variables I cannot say exactly what is the probability of a particular that that this random variable takes this particular value because it is going to be 0 right. So, basically you, you can say the probability that this event x is less than or equal to some number 
right some number specified what is the probability this is that then you can basically integrate you can look at the 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 integral of this density function from minus infinity to that point right this is this is exactly what we have here i give you some values x small x suffix small n x of x n plus 1 that is at different times I give you these values specified at times n n plus 1 so on. Now, we have the random variable x of n right I told you that if you have a random process if you basically fix a time value it becomes a random variable right. Now, if I want a distribution of this if I if I, if I give you a random sequence x of n and I say that this is statistically specified that means, I am interested in the probability that x, uh, x of this random variable x of n is less than or equal to some small x n right because it is random variable at this time step small n right. I can basically specify that what is the probability jointly that at this time this random variable is, is this is less than or equal to this at this time n plus 1 this random variable is less than or equal to x of n plus 1 dot 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 till the times that are specified ok. So, this picture should be very clear in your in your mind that we have a process we are sampling this process at different times and at different times we have these random variables and over these random variables we want to define the probability distribution function as opposed just to a probability distribution function or a probability density function that you can define for uh, you know a univariate uh, case or a multivariable uh, multivariate case ok. That sampling is very important <laughs> sampling this random process at different times specification of this in terms of this distribution. Now, so the representation we had by specifying the probability distribution function is an infinite. set of probability distribution functions for each n each capital N because for all times minus infinity less than n less than infinity we need to know the joint probability distribution function probability distribution function is also called uh, CDF cumulative distribution function right. You have to distinguish probability density versus probability distribution function. So, we can so once you know this distribution function I think this is very important uh, because you for every every value of capital N for every value of capital N you have to know all this this distribution for all these times right. So, I give you some integer capital N so N, N equals 1 N equals 2 N equals 3 for each of those integers I need to compute the joint distribution for all these times right. So, unlike one probability distribution function that you see the concept in in random processes you find that the statistical specification has basically an infinite set of probability distribution functions for each each n for each integer n. Now, I think this is sort of consistent we can uh, define the mean which is expectation of x of n which is basically for the continuous case is 
this is this just taking taking the statistical expectation this is for the continuous case and for the discrete case is basically you have a probability mass function and you can compute okay that is random variable at this time takes this value average over all possible values it takes clear. So, that means you can imagine that this mean is a function of the index potentially could be a function of this index. So, basically we also have some extensions or classifications of random processes. So, let x and y be random processes, they are a uncorrelated if r x y of t 1 t 2 is mu x of t 1 times mu y of t 2 conjugated, where r x y of t 1 t 2 is defined by our familiar cross correlation specified at times t 1 and t 2. You can define orthogonality for random processes. So, if r x y of t 1 t 2 is 0 for every t 1 and t 2 for all t 1 and t 2 then these two processes are orthogonal right. Imagine this is like the inner product, but we are taking expectation on a product right under that measure this is 0. So, therefore, the natural dot product I mean thinking about vectors or signals that are deterministic taking the inner product whether it is in whichever space that we want to look at the inner product and uh, or the you know in, in the integral norm or in whichever sense we took the inner product right. We could take the inner product and if that happened to be 0 we said it is orthogonal similar to that sense we can define orthogonality for random processes that r x y of t 1 t 2 is equal to 0 for all times t 1 and t 2 then these two processes are orthogonal. It is a very important idea just just imagine for every such two times you take these this product right x of t 1 and y conjugate t 2 and then take the expectation average it out and it has to be 0. It is a very very uh, powerful uh, powerful concept then there is something which is more basic which is independence if for positive integers n the nth order probability distribution function of x and y factors that is f x y of x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 
dot 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 x n y n given at times t 1 t 2 so on till t n. If this factorizes as f x of x 1 x 2 dot dot x n specified at times t 1 t 2 dot 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 t n and f y of y 1 y 2 dot 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 y n and t 1 t 2 dot 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 t n then we say that these two random processes are statistically independent. Okay. So, I specify all the times I, I know what values I need to take so when I when I when I say f x of x 1 x 2 then I say f x of the random variable capital X at time t 1 is less than or equal to small x 1 comma the random variable x capital X at time t 2 is less than or equal to t 2 so on and so forth using this definition that we have here right and if it if the, if the probability distribution function if it factors in this form then these two processes are statistically independent. Of course, then you can prove some other results from this if they are independent are they uncorrelated so on and so forth right you can sort of extend some of these results. So, we will pause here we will take a break. <coughs>